talk about, and I only got a limited amount of time, so I'm gonna try to keep it. I'm gonna try to keep it brief for one, but I'm also gonna keep it real, right? The reason why we're here is for you, but ain't about you. The reason why we're here, and I mean, how poignant is it that we're in the house of God? Because it all goes together. It's all part of one big mashup, right? It's all part of one big universe, one infinite heavenly existence and collaboration and, and synergy and connection to one another, but it, it all has to start somewhere. It all has a beginning. And funny enough, it's, it's implied that being here today is to celebrate the end of something. But in actuality, that's not even what commencement means. So this is how the dictionary defines commencement. It uses words like start, the beginning, the dawn of something, the birth Something. One of my favorites is launch. All of those things have their own poetry. They all have their own sense of, of, of power. They all might vibrate with each of you in a different way. But, but that launch, something about that launch just has a different kind of activity to it. it has a different kind of eruption and explosion and vertical implication to it. So you all are leaving college. You're launching into the next phase of what being a real learner is really about. Everything you've done here is really more of a preparation for the next phase than it is you ending anything you did before. Because everything that you've been doing, you're going to continue to do. So it doesn't really end, does it? It evolves, it grows, it expands, it changes. So if it were to end today, that would be a disgrace, would it not? So today is the beginning. This is your launch point into this new era of of excitement, of anxiety, of uncertainty, but it should also be a day of, of, of the joy of discovery, the joy of affirmation, and these moments that you're going to have where you're going to continue to learn who you are. We've been in books and we've been in classes and Listen to all kinds of people tell us what to do and what they thought and what they did back then and this theory and this theorem and this algorithm and this history, the battle of who knows who. But the most important thing to really walk out of here with is who have you become? How much did you change? How much did you grow? How much did you put yourself in a position where you are ready for what's next? Now you gotta be present. There's a, there's a proverb that says, if you're living in the past, then you're still afraid. If you're living too far in the future, then you're anxious, you're nervous, you're all oh, discombobulated, oh, you're all the way up there. But be here. Be right where you are. Understand where you are. And the real understanding again of where you are is how you got here. What really sets people apart is not what they've done, but how they did it. So if you didn't walk out of here with good study habits, you were trouble. If you didn't walk out of here with an understanding of, of how to think for yourself, you're in trouble. If you're not ready to come out of here and speak up for yourself, to speak
speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. To fight for what you know is right. And to do the right thing even when nobody's looking. Then you still got a lot of work to do. And guess what? If I just talked about you, it's okay. Don't feel bad. You got time. But don't waste it. Make sure that time has some direction. Make sure today, as Deja said, is the first day of the rest of your life. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. But it will be what you make it. It's going to be a lot of things you don't control. We all know that, right? We get uh, more mature folks in here that can speak to them. You know, I don't like to say older, so people take that person. But this is an extremely exciting day. I mean, even to be here, and first of all, thank you for allowing me to be here with you on this incredible day for you, to serve you. This is, this university, this college has a legacy unlike many others. It's one of the oldest in this country. So we are literally sitting on hollow ground. This used to be against the law. Look at how many people are here. Look, look, look around. Look. This used to be against the law. Even if all we're talking about is leadership and opportunity and change, even though we're talking Now, depending on how you read it, your different interpretations, which is why 
statements like that are so wise, right? They can mean sometimes so many different things. They have so much depth and so much texture to them. It's, sometimes it's a matter of perspective or time or age. What that means to you today is going to be something different than what that means to you 5, 10, 15, 30 years from now. Imagine that. Sometimes it's just a matter of inflection. So I can say it five different ways, like the actors often do. I can say, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. When the student is ready, the teacher disappears. Now for some of you, you probably think I'm talking about two different people. One of the ways I like to understand that is we're talking about one person. You've been a student. You will continue to be a student. So when the student is ready, the teacher appears. But then when the student is ready, the teacher disappears only because you become the teacher. I mean, I'm a teacher who can say, hey, y'all are ready to graduate. And I'm here. It ain't about me either. One of the other ways I like to think about that is when you make yourself better, you give opportunity permission to reach you. When you make yourself available, you give opportunity permission to reach you. So this preparation, this availability, this accessibility, it has everything to do with what you have, but not so much what you have, what it means coming through you. What's going to set you apart from everybody. You don't need to compare yourself to anybody else. What's going to set you apart from everybody else is you being you. Because the same information, the same standardized education, the same tests, the same books, same curriculum. The value of it is going to be that information coming through you, coming from you. How you apply it, who else you teach it to and share it with. It. Because if you think you got it in order to keep it, the reason why you have it is for you to give it away. The reason why you have it is because you're supposed to give it away and pay it forward, share it with other people. What you gonna do with it? You can't take it with you. If you don't do anything with it, if you don't give it away, what do you think service is? This is the house of service. And people made it their responsibility to serve you. So if you just keep all that to yourself and don't continue to make sure that energy moves, then you're just coveting it. You're being selfish. You came to school to get yours and, and that's it. Your community will never see you again. You're going to move up and move up in the world and do all these big things and what? These lights cost money. So put it in your budget to support this school when you leave. It helped launch you into the future. Give somebody else the same opportunity. It cannot end with you. So you've been a student. Now you have the opportunity to teach and share and show up for other people. You got your shot. This is your shot. And this is just one of them. This ain't the last shot you're going to take. And you're not going to make every shot. So what? Keep sharing. Get you. Because the more you practice, the better you are. The more you continue to apply yourself and, and make all these things make sense. How much information have y'all been given? Y'all be like, what is the purpose of this mess? Right? I know you need this. This don't mean nothing to me. But if you pay attention, you'd be surprised. Most of these folks know better than you. And they're giving you that information because they know it's relevant. 
You just don't know how yet. So receive it. Listen. Pay attention. Observe. Because so much of what you've learned is also to be taught. You're here to serve for the greater good. Don't, don't make it about you first and, and then later on, okay, yeah, later on, once I, get, once I get a whole bunch of money, then I'll start giving some back. Once I got all the information in the world, then I'll start sharing it with you. Don't, don't worry about what I'm doing over here. This is for me. All right? I know some of y'all do. No, no, no. This is, this is mine. Like, look, kid, mine. But it's not yours. It's not yours. We share it. We've all benefited from the contributions and sacrifices of others. It's now your opportunity to step it up. Your community needs you. Stay connected to it. Don't turn your back because people need you. Your brilliance, your strength, your creativity, your love, your compassion, your power. To whom much is given, much is also required. You still got work to do. So you can take a little like mini vacation and celebrate this incredible milestone and then get back to work. Don't be afraid to get back to work. I still have binders of old papers out there. All kind of, I think mean, I should probably show my age a little bit, all the handouts we used to give. Zero everything. But I keep that information because I still reference much of it. Now, of course, the information changes and evolves, technology changes. One of my degrees is in information systems and computer science and technology. A lot of that stuff has changed, but the foundations of it are still very much the same. Everything is just built on top of that. So everything that you have right now is extremely important because what you do next gets built on top of it. So it's got to be a strong foundation. Sometimes you got to go back and repair it or rebuild it, reinforce it. I still got some of my old textbooks. It's relevant. Don't stop reading just because you're out of college. <laughs> some of y'all probably refuse to pick up another book. <laughs> but listen, like I said, they can give your eyes a break and get back to it. I still have a library card. Matter of fact, I got three of them. Because I live in three different states. I have a library card in each city and state that I live in. And I use it. So regardless of how much you think you're moving forward and moving on, make sure you hold on to the best of some of this old school foundational power because it will continue to serve you in the true position you can serve others. The work is much deeper than you think it is. It's not about the money you're going to make. I know some of y'all are excited about that. But think about this. Think about taking a position for what you're going to learn, not for what you're going to earn. What you're really going to get paid for in the long run is not how much you got paid before. It's how well you do what you do. It's whether or not you even know what you're doing. I know a whole bunch of people get checks. They don't know what they're doing. And they wonder why they don't get promoted. They wonder why they can't move on. They wonder why they want to leave that job and they can't get another one because they got checked it for you because you're not bringing any value. You've been over there chilling. Get the check. Not growing, not serving, not doing anything. Just chilling, 
being still. But if this, if this pathway is not open because it's, it's cloudy,
You are strong. You have what it takes. You got people behind you. you got underneath you, you got people above you. Your conscience is always working. So listen. Do the best you can every day to do the best you can. Nothing more can be asked of you. But if you just show up, you waste the time, and you can't get that time. You can't get it back. Your work, the effort that you put in, is as simple as that, right? When you get out, you put in. Even when it comes to you personally, like stuff made it's imagine if you just took one hour a day, one hour a day to take care of yourself, to really do some real, honest, and sincere self maintenance. And it could be a combination of things. Prayer, stretching, exercise, yoga, reading. And not on social media, reading. And not only reading things that come from people who look like you, because there's a whole bunch of other people and a whole bunch of other brilliance on the planet. God speaks to everybody. Learn about what's going on around you. Understand the other people. We always fight for inclusion, but we don't want to understand what's happening around us. You cannot compete globally if you're working in this tiny little space. But take some time for self maintenance. I mean, one hour, one twenty-fourth of a day is what? Let's do the math. Less than five percent, right? So you're going to tell me every day you're not even worth less than 5% of your day to invest in your own health and healing and wellness and power. The personal power is in you. God is in you. Asking you to do something profound. And it's not just going to be one thing. You're going to do incredible things all the time. Believe that, trust in that, be confident in that. Allow it to happen. Even when somebody doesn't say thank you, it's still the right thing to do. So put it all together. All these last two, three, four, five, six years, I don't know, probably with some people coming out of here with advanced degrees as well. Put it all together. Find a way to make it all make sense because it's important. And when you put it all together, it all equals you and your brilliance and your beauty. That's what the world is waiting for. They're looking for you. We're waiting for you. We want you. We need you. And what better place to represent than this one? Wear the morning Owen on your chest, on your back, on your head, on your wall. Proud. This is an incredible legacy you're connected to. But similarly, because you're connected to it, you know how I folks are going to be out there acting a fool. Because then you make all the things that are connected to you look bad. And that's not you. And that's not them. So we are all so incredibly proud of each and every one of you. Give yourselves a huge.
confident in your ability to ask questions, confident in your ability to adapt to adversity, confident in your ability to make new friends, confident in your ability to leave behind old friends, confident in your ability to accept the gift that is you and the gifts within you. Use the tools that you gather. Find out how they can be relevant to what makes you special, what superpowers you have, and use those superpowers for good. Because there's no movie, no TV show, no character more powerful than you. You are the real deal. And the gifts and power that you have, all of you, need to be actualized so that real change can happen. I know that leadership power is in you. The opportunity to do that continues today. And I know that you all do that. No, I'm sorry. When you do that, change is going to continue to bloom and blossom right in front of your eyes. You don't even know what you're made of. It's greater than you think. So let's go. Let's get it. Let's make it happen. Let's be valid. Let's not be scared. Let's be courageous in spite of fear. Because why? It's time to launch. Today is the beginning of an incredible journey. And you are the master of your own faith. Congratulations. We love you. We believe you.
Now therefore, by the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Memorial College, I do confer upon you, Mr. Dodson, the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters and admit to you all rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Dr.